New light has been shed on the life of one of the Woolwich murder suspects by a man whose own life was indelibly altered by violent crime. Today, it emerged that the father of the murdered schoolboy, Damilola Taylor, has known the younger of the two men, Michael Adebowale, since he was a child. Richard Taylor also said he was a mentor to Adebowale when he was a schoolboy. Our Home Affairs correspondent, Simon Israel, reports. As the messages of sympathy and the bouquets of flowers extend endlessly down the road in Woolwich. A narrative is emerging about how this savage, sudden murder of drummer Lee Rigby came to pass. Today, an extraordinary story from one who knows of intense grief, the father of murdered schoolboy Damalola Taylor, for he was a mentor to one of the suspects, Michael Adabowali, also known as Toby. He tells of Michael's journey from the age of 12 through bullying at school to truancy to issues with gangs and drugs. He describes what he saw on Wednesday. What I saw that day um, is, is, is a different uh, um, um, Toby or Michael that I was seeing that day. Um, or saw the other man, you know, that was crazy, that was gruesome. His last conversation with the 22-year-old was very recent. I spoke to him about two months ago that, look, Toby, your mom is complaining again about you. And he said, no, uncle, there's nothing here. I have changed. I've become a, a Muslim. And more, too, on the older suspect, Michael Adabaloja. The University of Greenwich has, for the first time, confirmed that he was a registered student there from 2003 to 2005, but failed to complete the course. There are claims MI5 tried to recruit him. A friend and former member of the outlawed Islamist group al Mujahirun says he was tortured in Kenya, then visited by the security service. On his return back, uh, he had been stopped. And subsequently after that, basically, he was followed up by MR5. You know, he said they came to his house. You know, they were saying, knocking on his door, knocking his door. He pretended that he wasn't there. But they were knocking so much, he thought to himself, like, look, you know what, I need to kind of, like, you know, come and show my face. So he came out, he spoke to the, uh, to the MI5 agent, and they were saying, look, we just want to have a chat with you, we just want to speak to you. You sense there is a ring of truth here? Well, certainly that perhaps um, he was uh, spoken to by MI5. Certainly perhaps he was mistreated abroad by the Kenyan authorities, because I, I know firsthand such mistreatment can occur. And that probably contributed to him moving over from extremist vitriol to action. But I've got to say, so much of this is conjecture at this stage, at this stage and, we, and we mustn't take the word of an extremist at face value. It's not unusual for those in MI5 in the building behind me to try to recruit or use extremists as agents or informers. But rarely do the consequences, should things go awry, enter the public domain. These claims have a ring of truth. Sources have confirmed that Michael Adabaloja was in Kenya. And MPs have requested a written report from MI5's chief by the end of next week. With the football season over, the English Defence League staged one of its biggest ever demonstrations through Newcastle city centre. The pretext was Wednesday's murder of drummer Lee Rigby, but the rhetoric was the same as ever. This was another glimpse of the fallout. The less visible are the 150 or so reported attacks on Muslim communities in the last three days.